Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So perhaps uh, you can tell from my voice, um, I'm a bit you know, under the weather, so I will try my best. Uh, excuse me uh, if you, you know, <clears throat> uh, there's some hiccups during my talk. Um, okay, so the topic I'm going to talk uh, about today is called, you know, automated invariant generation for solidly smart contracts. And this is um, a joint work with my uh, PhD student, Ye Liu and um, Cheng Xuanzhang. Okay, so first of all, smart contracts. Uh, I guess most of the people here um, are well of smart contracts, uh, you know, which is one of the best applications of the blockchain technology. So compare with a traditional contract, such as the contract you sign on a piece of paper, I think that the best you know, advantage uh, of smart contract is that you know, it eliminates the need of uh, trusted intermediaries. So we don't really need to you know, pay uh, lawyers or uh, um, fees to get us to sign a contract. And everything will you know, run automatically and, and all the contract rules will be also enforced automatically. So this also uh, lower the cost for uh, you know, significant um, a month. Okay, but there's also issue with smart contracts, and here I want to specifically emphasize on the security impacts. Right. So although uh, smart contract promise, you know, a lot of good properties such as uh, it is immutable, right, it's transparent, everything will run automatically, but still, right, you need to make sure that. Um, the code you write, um, the contract you write is correct, right? Because without that guarantee, um, we don't have any, you know, inter trusted intermediaries. So there's, you know, nobody, you know, trying to help you if there's something going wrong. So if you make a mistake in a contract, then things will, you know, almost always go wrong. So how do we um, make sure the contract is correct, right? For example, you know, if the contract uh, implementation so that's the code written by the developer, is inconsistent with their intention, uh, which I also call the specification. Right? Specification is a software engineering term, which you know, uh, is a way to um, explicitly write out what are the intention of the developer. So we have to always make sure the implementation has to match with the specification. Right? Um, the, uh, if there's you know inconsistencies, this is same same as like there's a loophole in a contract um, agreement you make with the people, right? And this loophole can be then used uh, or exploited by um, by attackers, right? To you know um, compromise the security of the contracts. Okay, so how do we make sure the code you write is correct? This is uh, you know very classic problem. It's very hard uh, to solve. But, um, so I mean, um, theoretically, to make sure, to check whether the code is correct, in general, is undecidable. But in practice, uh, the good news is there are many existing tools and techniques already developed to, to you know, do this checking for us. But for any of these tools and techniques to work, um, we must first have this contract specification written. Right? Someone has to write write down what is the intended behavior for a contract. Uh, the problem is, you know, in practice, nobody writes specifications. Uh, it's too hard for developers. You know, already writing code is already hard. Now you ask them to write specification as well. So um, in practice, nobody do that. So how do we you know, solve this issue? So before I get into my technique for you know, generating these specifications automatically, I, I just want to go through uh, example to tell uh, to show you how these specifications uh, may look like. Right here, um, I have a simple ERC20 contract, and this contract is uh, contains a bug. So I think this contract was from maybe four years ago. It's called iToken. Um, it resulted in eight million um, dollars loss. So uh, the problematic function is actually very simple. It's called transfer. So it takes uh, a from address uh, and a to address. Uh, it takes a value, so that's the amount of uh, token you want to transfer uh, from um, the from to to, right? And you see there are just a few lines. Um, so, you know, at a first glance, you may not notice the, the issue, but uh, now I tell you, it can go wrong when 
uh, the from address equals to the to address, right? So that means you want to transfer uh, a token to yourself, right? Uh, so this code written here has a bug. So let's suppose the value uh, is, you know, five ether, and the original balance for um, our address is 10, right? So now, since from equals to two, so both uh, the balance for from and balance for two uh, are, are 10 tokens. Now, uh, we do the transfer. Um, the way it does it is to have this temporary variable called balance from new, and you subtract value from balance from, so then this balance from new becomes five. And then there's another line which will add this value to uh, the balance two, and then update this balance to new. And this balance to new now becomes 15, right? But the, the strange thing is that from is two. Uh, they're the same person, same address. Then the end result will be uh, the balance of this person becomes 15. So originally you start from 10 and you did nothing. You transfer tokens to yourself, then you get 15. So you're creating five additional coins out of thin air, right? That's definitely a secure issue. Okay, so um, the reason of this bug is really because the developer has missed this case uh, where the from address can be the um, to address. So that's different from uh, the developer's intention, the specification, right? So without that specification, uh, there's no way we can check whether the previous code is buggy or not. So here I show you another correct implementation for the same interface ERC20, right? Um, it's also a transfer function. But this one, uh, we have specification, and these specifications are ge automatically generated by our technique. So we have, um, you know, three type of uh, specification. The first one is called um, precondition. So for every function of a smart contract, uh, we, we have a precondition, uh, which I use this keyword called require. So the precondition is that these two address cannot be the null address. And if that's the case, then the old balance uh, needs to be bigger than the token you want to transfer. You must have enough token before you can do the transfer. And there are also uh, post conditions. These, we use this keyword called insurers. Right? So the first post condition, so this will uh, needs to hold after the execution of the function. Right? So first says, you know, two cannot be not address and from, if from, is not two. Right? That's the normal case that we, has already been considered. If that's the case, then, uh, you know, the new balance for the sender needs to be sub uh, deducted by this token's amount. And the balance for the receiver has to be increased by this token's amount, right? So that's um, also aligned align with our understanding of uh, how this transfer should work. And the um, exceptional case is when from equals to two, right? This is when sender and receiver are the same person, and then the balance of both should not change. Right. So that's um, the specification that we can get um, from our technique. And with that, we can then go back to check this code to see if the code really matched with that specification. And for the previous one, we'll be able to detect that error. Um, okay, sorry, I missed another one, which is called contract inf. So this is a you know, universal uh, environment that holds for all the functions. So these pre and post condition only holds for particular function. There's also some universal Contract, for example, here, some map, uh, some map of balance equal to total supply because there's a data structure we use to keep track of everyone's balance. Uh, we use a mapping for that purpose. So this environment says if you sum up the balance of all the users, they should always you know equal to the total supply of the tokens. So that means you know you cannot create tokens out of thin air. Right? With those we'll be able to detect all these errors. Okay, so now I uh, introduce uh, how our techniques works. Um, so our, we have a previous technique called InfCon, which was um, published in 2022. Um, this one infers what I call likely specs from past executions. So likely specifications, um, they are only based on the past, uh, you know, historical transaction histories. So they hold, uh, at, you know, at least, you know, um, for the for all the past execution of the contract. But we have no guarantee that they will all also hold in the future. Uh, so that's why we call this likely event. But this is already a good start. 
Right? So the way how Infcon works is, you know, it takes information of a particular contract from the blockchain platform, uh, takes things such as contract ABI, transaction histories, storage layout, and take these to generate something called a data trace generator. Uh, data traces, um, so we generated by this generator. And then we take these data traces and apply um, these common template for environments. And whenever we find an environment um, of a template that satisfy all these data traces, then we'll output those as a result. So for example, here you see uh, these are some of the preconditions and postconditions generated for the transfer function. Right. There are things like, you know, two cannot be a null address. Um, two does not equal to from, right? This can be the case if in the past there's no transaction that is sending from the same sender to the same receiver, right? Um, and there's also some post conditions some, uh, such as the sum of all the balances should be greater than zero, zero and sum of the balance equal to this um, particular value, and the total supply equal to the original total supply. That means, you know, after a transaction, the total supply does not change. Okay, so these are already useful in many cases. Uh, some of these um, actually aligns with what I just showed you before in the examples. But there's also some issue with this. So some of these um, environments, so-called likely environments, may not hold right in the future if there's a you know attack or some or someone perform um, some you know irregular transaction that we do, did not observe in the past then this may not always hold um, okay if you're interested um, you can also see our tools um, online so we have this uh, web interface uh, for Infcon you can pick um, any contract. We, 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 we included a collection of uh, sample contracts and their transaction histories so that you'll be able to you know, play with it. So for example, uh, I choose one of the contracts and I just you know, click on Get Invariant. You'll be able to see uh, the contract source code on the left. There's you know, functions such as balance of transfer, right, things like that. And then you'll be able to find their corresponding Invariants generated by our two on the right, right. Some of these invariants are uh, invariants here may be useful, may be correct, uh, but some of those may not, right. Um, but we don't really have a good way to tell which ones are correct and which are or not. So to solve that issue, right, um, I'm going to introduce another technique um, called income plus, right. Here I have two examples. So some Inverse may not always hold, for example, um, if they're only inferred based on limited historical transactions, something, uh, if they, they have not happened yet, we, we have no way to get those invariant. Uh, things like this, so some of the balance can be this value, but if, for example, I have a new user who deposit additional tokens into the contract, then this value can change, right? Um, there can also be irrelevant invariants hold by accidents, such as, you know, message value is less than the timestamp value, right? This is purely by accident. So we have to get rid of uh, all these invariants. So uh, here, let me introduce uh, our new technique called income plus, right? This is a way to automatically generate statically verified invariants. Right. Um, this tool is built on top of a, a, a tool from Microsoft called Verisol. Right. Um, by statically verified, what I mean is all the environment generated by income plus um, will hold right, it, with respect to the contract code. So we, we have guarantee that this environment will hold uh, even with you know, future uh, transactions that we haven't observed before. So to make sure that this environment will always hold, um, we have to, you know, take those dynamically inferred environments from Infcon and then perform some verification. Right? This verification is done by Verisol, and Verisol has this very nice uh, intermediate verification language called Boogie, and we have to, you know, modify uh, on top of uh, uh, this Boogie language to be able to uh, 
also infer some of the you know um, solidity specification that we would like to you know, include in our tool. Okay, so we take those invariants generated by AFCON, including you know precondition, postcondition, and maybe also some uh, contract level uh, specification, uh, uh, contract level invariants, and then we send those to the modular invariant verifier. Right, some of these will be verified against the uh, contract code, such as those showing green, and some of those cannot be verified. So if the uh, if an invariant cannot be verified, that means that there's a gap between you know the likely invariant inferred dynamically and the source code. So that indicate that these you know red ones they may not hold if you you know send another transaction in the future. For example, um, you know this value is greater than message value. Uh, and value not equal to message value. These are, you know, particular cases that you observed in the past. But um, a more general uh, and environment which can be verified is value is greater than equal to message value. And some, so, uh, also this one, right, two, not equal to from. Right? This is, you know, as I mentioned before, perhaps in the past we haven't observed a case where a person is trying to send a token to himself but this cannot exclude the case that this can happen in the future. Um, although this cannot be verified, but we can still uh, try to reuse this in, for example, implication learner, later I'll introduce. Right. Okay, then we also try to discover you know, new invariant um, based on both verified and unverified uh, invariants. For example, I take two not equal to from and I combine it with some of our other invariants I get from the, the templates. And then I can construct these uh, implication invariants. So implication invariant is a higher level invariant where it, it has an implication structure. So, um, so this is to say that if two not equal to from, then uh, the two's balance should be uh, increased by value, right? But when I construct these implications, um, I may construct many uh, many of those copies. Some of those, again, some of those may hold. Some of the, some of this may not hold. So I need to also take these uh, to the modular environment verifier, and the verifier will, you know, eliminate the ones uh, in red which cannot be verified, and keep the ones in green, which can be verified. Okay, so I get a lot of environment, and every you know, green ones are guaranteed to hold. Right? But still, there can be redundant ones, such as this one, uh, such as these two, right? Total supply greater than or equal to original total supply. Total supply less than or equal to original total supply. And if you combine those two, uh, it, which can, it's just a repetition of uh, this one here, total supply equal to original total supply. So this surpriser will also you know, try to find all those duplicate and useless environment and eliminate them right, uh, from the final result. So this will be the final result. Uh, all the grains are uh, the environments that can be verified uh, on top of the source code. And then these environments can then be used you know, by other techniques and tools to find security issues. Uh, can also, you know, as a bridge between the developers uh, and the code to try to find, um, you know, try to derive uh, the code incrementally. Okay, so to evaluate our technique, um, basically we focus on ERC20 and ERC721, those contracts um, very nicely, they have uh, well-established specification already. So we have a ground truth to compare with. For example, uh, the, in this table, we have collected um, many pre- and post-conditions uh, and also contract environments from existing literatures um, and documentations and the ERC-71, it's the same, right? For all the functions, we have collected their um, environments from well-established sources. And so in our experiment, we use Infocom Plus to look at ERC-20 and ERC-721 contracts plus their transaction histories and try to recover all these environments. Right? If we can recover all of those, that means our, uh, our technique is very, very good, right? Uh, but if we, we uh, 
so first of all, we, our technique cannot uh, infer an incorrect specification. Uh, this is also proved in our experiment. So all the environments that we get are indeed correct. Uh, so the, the next thing we want to focus on is recall, right? We want to make sure that we are able to generate most of these environments listed here. Uh, and this is a uh, result. So infcon is like the previous technique that I showed you. It's a, uh, you know, that dynamic technique that infer likely environments. And it turns out that its um, recall is also quite low. Uh, so it misses a lot of the um, intended environments. And then we have um, you know, a few different versions. And Infcom Plus overall can achieve 80% uh, recall. Right? There's, um, unfortunately, there's no other technique that we can directly compare with. So we have to you know, uh, make a few variants of our own. Uh, in terms of the scalability, right? so ideally, if you give more transaction histories um, to the technique, it can generate more uh, environments. Right? But this may not always be the case. So for example, for uh, some of our uh, variants, they may not you know, scale too, too well, because they won't be able to you know, uh, generate new environments by combining different pieces um, of the templates. Uh, and Infcom Plus can do that. Right? OK, uh, finally, the. Um, applicability to security issues. Uh, so here we use the data set called Awesome Buggy ERC20 Tokens. And these are real world vulnerabilities collected from ERC20 smart contracts. So uh, the reason why we focus on ERC20 is always because uh, the ground truth is better. But it doesn't mean that our techniques can only be applied on ERC20. Um, OK, so the result is that on these um, different vulnerability types, uh, most of uh, them, we we are able to generate useful environments that can be used to detect those uh, known vulnerabilities. Right. So one of the examples is shown here. Uh, so a lot of the vulnerabilities are related to uh, integer overflow or underflow, or integer overflow, right? Uh, so in this uh, CVE from Beauty Chain, uh, there's uh, a line here which is doing some multiplication, right? This amount. Um, can overflow when you know the, uh, this value is too, too big, uh, and then this can be detected because it violates one of the environment contract environment total supply equal to some mappings. When it overflow, it may become a very small value. Then it won't match with the total supply value uh, anymore. Okay, so uh, that's all uh, I want to talk about. Uh, so. Infcon is available here um, on GitHub. And if you want to try, uh, feel free to scan this QR code. And to use Infcon, actually, there are some common scenarios, right? Um, if your contract is already de deployed, uh, you have a lot of uh, transaction histories, and these can be used uh, by our technique to infer environments. And then you can use those environments uh, with our, um, to, to detect, for example, bugs or security issues. And before you deploy um, your contracts, you can also run AIMCOM Plus. Uh, although um, for those, you, you may not have you know, readily available transaction histories, but uh, with you know, a few test cases, you, you can generate some you know, random transactions. And then with those histories, we can already start um, to infer environments. And this can become an interactive process. And you can derive uh, specs and code interactively, right, while developing the code. Okay, so that's all, and if you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to take some. Thank you.